This is the 2000 Penguins Classics edition of James Joyce, A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man. And this is a PDF version of the same book. Notice any differences? Probably not, since most modern fonts have been developed for the ease of the reader so that we don't consciously think about it. But I can guarantee you that someone, be they a publisher, a typographer, or a paleographer like me, has thought about the script that you're reading. The printed book is set in a type called Monophoto Sabin, which is an old style serif font that's closely related to the more popular Times New Roman. The ebook, however, is printed in Arial, which is a sans serif font. Now, have you ever wondered why certain fonts look better in different media? Certain font characteristics, such as spacing, thickness, and serifs, can assist with how easily we process information over different media. And that is precisely why and how the Times New Roman font came into being. Stanley Morrison, an influential British typographer, critiqued the Times for using what he called an outdated font for their newspaper. Their font, Morrison argued, was too thin and spaced out, thus making it really difficult to read. The Times invited Morrison to develop something better. This proved to be quite a challenge, since the font needed to maximize the number of words printed in a newspaper column without affecting its legibility. Morrison was able to achieve this by making the letters rounder and thicker. He also increased the height of the letters and decreased spacing between letters and words. The result was Times New Roman, which debuted in 1932 and became wildly popular with other newspapers over the next few decades. Morrison actually drew inspiration from a script more than a thousand years old, one that we now call Caroline Minuscule. The script was noted for its ease to read due to its well-proportioned letters, rounded appearance, emphasis on spacing between letters and words, and lack of cursive elements. Eventually, Caroline Minuscule gave way to new scripts, like Gothic and Secretary, the latter of which we can see in this book. Both of these scripts were known for their complicated abbreviations and calligraphic ligatures. But during the Renaissance, Minuscule came back into fashion and was then known as humanist script. Looking at medieval manuscripts isn't just about finding inspiration for new fonts. It's also about passing on the knowledge and history contained within them to future generations. Manuscripts provide an immediate connection to past generations and the perspectives that they had in their complex historical and socioeconomic contexts. In order to keep the historical information and traditions that manuscripts contain alive, it's important to continue developing the skills necessary to read, edit, and translate manuscripts, whether it be Beowulf, a Ciceronian treatise, or historical charters.